Janet is in. The Fed is in. Investors are in. Are you in or out? Let's face it, those who are putting their money into the stock market, real estate, and many other assets are benefiting from the devaluation of the currency. Those who are working for their money, who have some savings, who need to live off a pension or social security are ultimately getting crushed. The question is, at what point do the vast majority of people wake up to ask, who is responsible for this? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to look at food prices rising. We're going to talk about real estate. We're going to show you what's been happening and the indicators behind it all. I've got so much important information to get to and not enough time. Let's get into it right away. Janet Yellen at the top of the treasury would give boost to bull investors, according to your favorite and mine, Jim Cramer. Over and over again, she made the case for a full employment agenda to help people who don't have jobs and need to put food on the table. And of course, that means that Janet Yellen wants to spend a lot of money. And when you have a lot of money being spent, that's good for bulls. Now, think about how ridiculous this is. You're talking about spending money, but what do they do? They simply help their friends in high places. The Federal Reserve gives the money to Apple indirectly or directly. Do you see how that works? Then you look at it from the treasury side. The treasury does the same thing. They're giving all the money to the big businesses. Who got the bailouts of the farms? All the big farms, the agribusiness, they got most of the money. That was documented, that was proved in the statistics that I've shown you here on the channel. When we look at the loans that people were getting, the PPP loans, my goodness, people were getting $1 PPP loans. Other people were getting you know, $3 and $12 and so on. I was covering that here not that long ago. They try to make it seem as if you know we're helping out the little guy, we're going to help you. They create the CARES Act because of course it's so caring and so on. This is ridiculous. These institutions, the mega corporations, all of the different alphabet letter agencies, they're all on the same team. And when people start realizing that those lines are blurred, that things cross over each other, that there's a revolving door, then they might start to wake up. Until then, they're sleeping, they're zombies, they're sheep, whatever you want to call it, that's just the way it is. And you have to accept the fate that you're given unless you wake up to that fact. Austin, Texas, expected to be the nation's hottest housing market in 2021. This information comes from Zillow, and you can see here what they talk about. I wanted to mention some of the areas because I know that people are always looking to see what's going on. Not necessarily if they live in that area, but maybe they want to invest in an area looking to see the trends. I'm always keeping an eye on that. If you're new to the channel, stay tuned here because I'm always mentioning where the trends are going. If you pay attention closely, you're going to get those tips. So take a look at this. A panel of economists and real estate experts expect Austin to outperform the national market by the largest margin, followed by Phoenix, Nashville, Tampa, and Denver. All right, that is important to see where the money is going, where it's leaving. Speaking of leaving, expensive coastal markets like New York, San Francisco, and LA are most likely to underperform, though Zillow expects growth in every market. Key tailwinds include an improved economic outlook underpinned by progress on what they're doing supposedly here, trying to help people out, so they say, while affordability and available supply are potential drags. So right now, if you look at some of these markets, there isn't enough supply, so they say, that is trying to just get new construction out there. And you have to look at it because there are always nuances. And that's why I sort of hesitated my speech here, because you could see that there's the condo market. The condo market is not doing so well. It has headed down and doesn't look like it's coming up in 2021, but we'll see. At least it won't be at the pace that we are seeing for the detached homes. You also look at what's going on with office, with retail. These things here are probably going to be hurt. Now, if you look at certain areas that are really, really hot, those areas, they might need some office. They might need that retail. So it might not be a drag as much as you would see in an area like New York, for instance. So this is just some information, of course. Stay tuned for more. 
the state's Americans headed to the most in 2020, according to U-Haul. I have also had independent uh, individuals come into me with their information related to this, and it corresponds directly. Work from home orders and job losses prompted many Americans to pack up and head to other states in 2020. We knew that, talked about this before, but when you get the information from U-Haul, it's kind of that secondary or third level analysis analysis or indicator that I love because it's not, you know, the U3 unemployment rate. It's not the jobs numbers. These things can be manipulated and skewed. But when you start to get a few things, if you're trying to get to one factor and you triangulate, as I say, the position around it, maybe you don't know exactly what the statistics should be or whatever, but you can get a really, really good idea and have sort of a, a strong outlook as to what it is. You're not going to get that from one simple indicator. When they say unemployment is, uh, you know, doing better at this point and they get this U3 unemployment rate. How are you going to tell anything from the U3 unemployment rate? It doesn't help you at all. Anyway, the ones who rented one-way U-Hauls went to states like Tennessee, Texas, Florida, and Ohio. U-Hauls annual migration trends report calculates how many one-way U-Haul vehicles enter a state versus how many leave it each calendar year for 2020. The data were compiled from more than 2 million one-way U-Haul rental customer transactions. It's interesting to see how the migration trends change. And look, people are moving. They're always moving. Whether there's ups or downs, doesn't matter. You see people that move for business, for family reasons, for different reasons altogether. But you can see right now that the trend is clearly there. The very expensive areas, those very expensive cities had people leaving and the people going in were going to areas, as they say here, Tennessee, Texas, Florida, Ohio. And if you break it down by city, it's those we've covered before. Different areas of Texas I've noted, different places in Florida that I've noted, you're looking at at even Arizona, others that have really seen a boom as a result of this, and that real estate is looking much better than where you're seeing it in other areas, New York, California, and so on. They may not have as much growth through this year. During any crisis, there are always winners and losers. And you can see right now, unfortunately, the people at the bottom end of the spectrum are losing out the most. As expected during these periods, there is never actually any support for the bottom, let's say 50%. And if you go up even further to a lesser degree, the bottom 80%, they're not gonna get any help. The help is being applied to the top 1% or higher. And then you look at it statistically, of course, it's actually higher than that, but you might get a little bit of trickle down towards the 1% and it pretty much stops there. Falling behind, for those at the other end of the spectrum, things are very different. Employment for the bottom quartile of American earners, those making less than 27000 a year, remains more than 20% below January 2020 levels. Last month, nearly 30 million adults lived in households where there wasn't enough to eat. So you've got the Federal Reserve printing money, giving it to Apple. You've got the Federal Reserve creating all these new types of, you know, alphabet garbage that they created. I mean, my goodness, I can't find the words to describe it. I call it garbage, whatever. You can call it whatever you want. And all these different programs that they set up, oh, it was there to help Main Street. Oh, it was there to help the stability of prices, to help and maintain full employment, and in fact, it exacerbated the conditions. It made them worse. That has been documented over and over and over again. And so I show these statistics to you, but I know in many cases, I am preaching to the choir. I got that. But we need this information to always continuously be put out and we get the updates on it. Anyway, you could see the chart at the bottom if you're interested, but I know that we're on the same page. Exact same situation in Canada, and hey, look around the world, it's the same thing. 
Income gap in Canada widening at a dramatic pace, according to CIBC. High wage earners gained 350,000 jobs over the past year. The lower the pay grade, the worse the job market performance. That's the way it is. That's the way that it's going. And this is probably going to get worse as we see it over and over and over again. Those at the top, they get to the gain, you know, that K-shaped recovery that they're talking about. And those at the bottom, they get, what was it, $600? All right. And maybe they're going to get $1,400. Is that what's happening? Okay. So they got $2,000. they are going to get some extra unemployment. That's great. Okay. A few hundred bucks here and there. Where is the actual resolution? Never, never will there be resolution when you've got central banks doing what they do. I don't care. I really do not care how many people deny the nefarious activities of the central bank saying, no, 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 they're helping. They're helping. No, they're not. And I don't care who wants to believe otherwise. You can share your opinions. Absolutely. I, I welcome that. But I'm never going to take the other side of that argument. You've got food prices increasing at a dramatic pace, as well as real estate, as well as so many other things. Look at what's going on now. China's record corn imports, you are seeing them skyrocket right now. But what's the reason for this? There could be many things. You have seen what occurred, of course, with the trade deal. They made these big promises about how much they were going to buy. They failed to buy what they said they would, but agriculture somewhat did increase, as I mentioned uh, maybe the last video or the one before that. They actually did increase, not to the levels that were supposedly going to hit, but all in all, we had seen that China was dealing with their own issues, crop losses and so on, so they had to purchase a lot. At the same time, they had a huge problem. I mean, it seems like a long time ago now, but with a lot of their pigs, if I'm not mistaken, memory serves correctly, they had to slaughter a whole bunch of them. So I'm not sure exactly where this food is being fed. And usually it's for animal feed, uh, but it all depends. Anyway, just showing you that there's been a significant ramp up in the corn imports from China. But you also look at the Bloomberg Grains sub-index, generally in agriculture has seen a huge spike upwards as I've been covering recently. And we're going back to levels we haven't seen since 2014. That tells you right now that there's going to be a group of people that are going to be hurt most by this, by the price increases. And I'll tell you right now, it's not the same people who are benefiting from the Federal Reserve and all their activities. No, of course, it only makes it worse. I wanted to get this quick update before I move into some charts here. Look at this. FedEx to cut up 60, up to 6,300 jobs in Europe on TNT integration. This is very clear that when you have these mergers and acquisitions, you are always going to see jobs being slashed. This is yet another example. All right, quickly, I want to move through these. I do cover these uh, fairly regularly, so I just want to give you an update on a lot of this. We're moving through a few charts that I have from Real Investment Advice and other areas. Uh, looking at this first, the technology sector now has approximately $1 trillion of market cap with negative earnings. It's stupid, okay? I'm just saying it. It's stupid. When you see this kind of thing, you can't make excuses for it. There's just no excuse. Put it, put, you know, just for fun. Let's put, put some stuff in the comments here. The excuse for this, my, I'm going to go with that unicorns release gases that actually elevate the market. Okay. So, you know, you have these unicorns, they release a gas and that actually pushes like helium, the market upward. How does that sound? You can try yours in the comment section. Let's have some fun. Margin debt and free cash balances, it does not give you a sign that the market is going to crash tomorrow because the margin's at a record high. You can't do that. You, you can't make that correlation. But what it does tell you is that we have the most risk taking ever. The most, let's just say that right now, not just because of margin, but because of many of the other indicators. Look at the put call ratio. Look at many others. Just take a look at this. I mean, it is truly truly excessive the levels that people will go to. Real Investment Advice pointed this out at the end of their article, essentially saying that, look, 
The market right now is taking super risks. They are going all out right now. But at the same time, they're not necessarily saying that they're going to be selling. They're just pointing out to the fact that this is crazy. This is ridiculous. And they mention how every single time it's different, it's different, it's different. That's what people say. And it really never is because there's always inevitably a crisis. But people don't know what to do. And that's the fact. They actually don't know how to pivot. That word, I've been sucked into that word. Anyway, they don't know how to change when the time comes. So they simply let it ride. And they think to themselves, look, if the market comes down by 60%, if it comes down by 70%, I don't really need to worry because eventually it will go back to where it was. The, the issue with that is that this level of ignorance will ultimately hurt a lot of people. Because if you look at Exxon, Exxon, 2013, biggest company in the world. Several years later, it's not even on the index anymore. That's how you know garbage, basically, it is to the market. Everything has changed. And we're talking about from the biggest company in the world to not even on the index anymore. You know this is a crazy, topsy-turvy world we live in. Right now, today, you look at the fund manager survey of uh, Bank of America, and I just want to give you quick updates. Evolution of the global fund manager survey, most crowded trade. Long Bitcoin. Long Bitcoin is the new most crowded trade, which is funny because, you know, these guys don't invest in Bitcoin. So they just believe everybody is doing it, and yet they're actually not. This is fund manager survey, remember, not actually uh, individuals and so on. It's not actually a, a calculation. This is asking what they believe is. And right here, you can see comparing January to December. And just giving you an idea right now of how much that has changed over a period of one month. Because, of course, the price had rallied like crazy. But now, suddenly, not long tech. That has come down significantly from where it was in December. These people are just atrocious to see. You know, they don't even know what they're talking about. And yet, they put it down on paper. I'm not saying what it is. I'm saying to you that if you look at the fund managers and what they actually do, they hate everything. They hate all of these unless they could make money off of it. And they haven't been able to really do that. There is, you know, they got the futures and so on, but that's nothing. That's such a small piece. It's just like gold. They hate gold too because they don't make the commissions. That's why you never hear recommended. All right. Let's look at the last thing right here. Just take a look at this. ECB is capping bond yields, but don't call it yield curve control. Of course, you know exactly what they're doing, just like Japan and so on. This is a chart below controlling yields. ECB is actively managing managing euro area borrowing costs. All central banks are doing this to some level, to some degree. And of course, we will see how this continues in the future when they come out and say, we were doing it for your own good. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that. Click that button to help me out. Thank you. If you want to learn about e-commerce, you're interested in actually making money on the internet, you can do that for free at the amazongps.com. The financial system is complex. It's convoluted. It's very difficult to understand because they made it that way to keep you in the dark. Well, this right here, my two books, well, they'll explain what you need to know very, very simply. I made it easy for anybody to understand. Check it out at the link in the description. Hang on. Hold on. Have you seen this video yet? If not, highly recommend checking it out. It will correspond to what you just saw today. That's all. Click it. I'll see you there.